We have the pleasure of welcoming Karen Azulai to our interview series today. I'm Ashwarya Jain from the People Hum team. Before we begin, just a quick intro of People Hum. People Hum is an end-to-end, one-view, integrated human capital management automation platform. The winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for HCM that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work with AI and automation technologies. We run the People Hum blog and video channel which receives upwards of 200,000 visitors a year and publish around two interviews with well-known names globally every month. And now for our guest, Karan Azalai is a global sourcing trainer and co-founder of HR Tech Nation. She is a well-known keynote speaker who is passionate about propagating her unique ideas and knowledge about new age job sourcing. She's also mentored Israeli's first HR Tech Accelerator. Being an expert herself, she also brings with her a lot of experience and adventure to try out everything tech and new. Welcome Karen, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you for having me here. You know, Karen, could you tell us a little bit about your interesting work as a global sourcing trainer? What does that mean? Um, well, global global is only because it's uh, all over the world, okay? Um, but basically, it's, it's um, sharing my view on how uh, sourcing, talent sourcing needs to be done. I'm a little bit different from other trainers uh, in, in two senses. One, uh, that I come from the intelligence force here in Israel. I, I, you know, here in Israel we do army, the women do army for two years. Um, and my mindset is such of a searcher, okay? More a researcher than uh, just somebody, uh, not just, but as a recruiter doing sourcing, okay? I have a totally uh, different background. As well as I was an information professional, so I'm all about the search, basically. Um, and uh, this means that I will not rest until I find my bit of information, in this case, people. Um, for me, sourcing is not only LinkedIn. And many recruiters, what happens with them is that they at least this is how they were brought up, okay, or educated uh, in sourcing, is that LinkedIn is basically sourcing. Uh, for me, LinkedIn is only one source because of my mindset, okay? I would never only look in one source, okay? So basically what I do is I train for sourcing, uh, following my mindset where it has to be uh, searching wherever those people are, okay? Uh, and LinkedIn is just one place to start, okay? We have like advanced, and we'll probably talk about it, but there's advanced uh, sourcing tools that uh, in one click generate results from a hundred uh, websites, and LinkedIn is just one, okay? So yeah, so when I train, it's uh, very important for me to add, uh, not to add, but to bring or to share my mindset um, and uh, yeah, make uh, help make uh, sourcers uh, much more professional than what they're doing today. The companies need to um, basically uh, start sourcing really globally because you need to find remote workers today, okay? Even if we're out of the corona at some point, and you've seen me with the mask before, um, even, uh, even after post-corona, I think this remote work is not something that's going to disappear. So you, I think companies are finally going to be more open to finding talent wherever it is in the world and not just, you know, in a radius of their own country. Absolutely. And do you also think the number of gig workers, the gig economy is going to increase and there'll be more people doing, you know, freelancing and more of contract mm -hmm. work, workers? Okay, so... Let's put it this way. Up until now, we've seen that the gig economy was catching really quickly, okay? I mean, uh, I think we saw more and more uh, people going and becoming freelance. In the US, I think the number was 30% were already freelancers. Um, but we did, uh, we were hit very hard with this uh, corona uh, crisis. Um, and in some countries, um, independent uh, workers and freelancers and employees um, found themselves with no work. 
uh, um, no kind uh, of, um, I don't know what the word is, remuneration for it, or no, nobody's paying them for anything, not even the government. Um, so I think it may a little bit shake up the industry of the freelancers. Um, on one hand, thinking, oh my God, uh, in such a situation, I'm in really deep, deep trouble. So I may want to go back and work for a company. Um, but then on the, other, on the other hand, there's this remote work that's going to be catching finally so much stronger. So maybe that's, and you can become an employee and still remain in your own country. And I don't know, even, you know, if you're a digital nomad, you can still become an employee and work under a coconut tree. So um, I don't know exactly how the, the balance is going to change um, either. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking 50, 50, 50 right now, either uh, they're going to be less inclined to it to more inclined to it. Seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm right there in the middle right now. <laughs> yeah, because it's so unpredictable. There's so much uncertainty that you just don't know what's going to happen. And Absolutely. There's going to be an increase in the number of, you know, candidates that you're going to have. And so in, in those circumstances, how do you think organizations should look at recruiting? Yes, I'm, I'm, you know, there's one aspect of me is that extremely happy about what's happening right now, uh, because it really is going to open the door uh, a little bit wider for HRs, for recruiting managers, HRs, even CEOs uh, of startups to start adopting technology because, <coughs> sorry, it's not Corona cough. <laughs> um, there, uh, I think they're going to be more open to technologies because, as you said, there's going to be so much. Uh, the volume, I think, is going to be so much bigger, uh, larger, and they're going to need technology to, you know, sort through the CVs quicker, do the matching, and uh, there's a lot of technology out there that's really automating the whole process. Okay, so basically. Um, but, but there's another caveat for it. I mean, some of them are just, you know, still coping with what it means to use Zoom, okay? Yesterday, uh, I had to wait about 15 to 20 minutes uh, in line to get a Zoom working, okay? Yeah, so it's not, Zoom is not going to be the answer to everything. So there's a lot of HR tech there. <coughs> There's a lot of HR tech there that is uh, uh, that includes chatbots and uh, um, virtual interviews and a lot and a lot of that kind of technologies that can uh, step in and take over. But since they're still so, I would say, um, overwhelmed by everything that has happened, I don't know at this point how open they're going to be with adapting new technologies but I think they will understand at some point that they're going to have to. Is it going to be right now, the minute we step out of this? I don't think so. Um, but definitely, I think there's going to be at some point uh, more awareness for it, finally, I hope. The HR tech startups, uh, still a lot of them still don't know uh, to say what the ROI is when you use their solutions, okay? Because it's relatively new. We have only two, two well, three years uh, of chatbots. Uh, some of the other companies have been around maybe a little bit more, but the industry is about three years old, okay? Um, so they're just still collecting, and most of it is two years and one year. So they're basically still collecting data all the time, and they're not always able to say, hey, if you use our solution, it's going to be so much, I mean, you're going to be able to save 70% of your recruiter's time. So, so some of them do say it, but can they prove it? Not many of them can. And it doesn't still work like we would have liked it to work, okay? So, um, and of course, uh, you know, some of them have really big uh, companies as clients and some of them are doing very well but there's like about 25, 26, 27,000 applications out there. Okay, so not all of them have this kind of experience that you need 
uh, and data that you need in order to decide if you want to embrace them or not. Um, so uh, I don't, uh, so it's not only the HR's uh, fault um, for not uh, adapting them, okay? It's, it's on both sides. I hope, did I answer the question? Yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs> And you know, what do you think uh, in terms of HR tech, what is it that recruiters really want? Because you know, a lot of the viewers might also be looking at HR tech and they might be making HR tech. So if you could tell us what exactly recruiters want in HR tech. Um, listen, the suite of solutions we have today for the recruiter is basically, it begins from even the pre-recruitment, the, uh, the, the pre-applying, even uh, at the point where somebody before he applies, okay, let's put it this way. I don't want to say uh, the, the uh, branding of the company, but that's ex very important. But even before they apply, uh, there's already HR tech, there's applications trying to, um, 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 how would I say, to, to supply them with uh, more information about the company before they apply, okay? Even on the career page, there's a lot of that um, uh, connecting with the, with the potential candidates on their career page. Once they apply, there's already uh, technology, Not to, I won't call it technology because technology is the infrastructure, let's call it applications, okay? Uh, there's applications that are, uh, once they apply, there's a chatbot that will speak to them, answer all their questions, um, take them through a whole process of sending them to testing, evaluation, gamification, assessment online. All of this before the sourcer even speaks to them or even the recruiter before they speak to them. Um, and uh, a lot can be done before that. The point is, I believe, HR technology for the recruiter or recruiting technology, what it does, uh, I believe putting it in, in a nutshell, is really doing the assessment, the pre-assessment before those uh, potential candidates even step into the company, which today, okay, happens after you've spoken to them, they come into the company and then you send them tests or whatever, okay? But this is already, you get a short list of people that are already probably extremely, um, extremely um, fit, fit for the company. And that some of the recruitment is fully, uh, fully automated, okay? From the minute the, the uh, system goes out to source for those people on the outside, on the internet, also on the company's database, okay? So the whole thing up to the point that you get uh, a pre-vetted list, short, short list of three, four or five candidates that have rated really well against, I don't know, a thousand uh, applicants, okay? And you still have not spoken to any one of them. I mean, you just, you can speak to those five, okay? A lot of it is also performance-based. I mean, not having to use a CV, just performance-based. There's a lot of... Uh, AI-based uh, performance uh, testing tests, sorry. Um, and uh, that way you, you get people that are already, um, have shown that they can do it well. I mean, what more than that? Right, so performance-based hiring is something that, uh, that works, really works. It's going, it's going to catch, I believe, much more. Um, because CVs, uh, we already know, is not, uh, is not the right uh, way to get a really uh, in-depth evaluation of a potential candidate, right? Um, sometimes they don't know how to write it or they, they miss out on their great points or experience. Um, yeah, so HR tech is, uh, is really, I would say, um, enabling uh, for candidates to shine their experience, okay? Their real experience and their real uh, personality uh, as opposed to a, you know, to a page with some words on it. <laughs> yeah. Not the right ones, and not the right ones either. <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely. And when it comes to sourcing talent, um, you know, what is the number one source of talent? Now, I do understand that a lot of people think LinkedIn is kind of 
uh, you know, the best source out there and it has changed the landscape worldwide. What is your take on that? I want to say, first of all, I said the first part of it, listen, we can't take away the fact that it's a great source, okay? But I, I don't have to tell you that so many of the profiles are not full. There's not a lot of information in them. Uh, they're very uh, basic, okay? So, so for me, that's not the ultimate. Uh, it's not the ultimate source. As I said, it's only one source out of many. There's so much more information out there on the internet. Not to mention there are people who don't want to be on LinkedIn, okay? Um, so, for example, when I was uh, doing some work uh, in uh, New York, they don't want, because they were trying to uh, recruit uh, sales managers, sales and marketing managers, um, they insisted on those people to have a LinkedIn profile. So they weren't even interested in looking elsewhere because they needed that LinkedIn profile. So that was one case where they needed to have a LinkedIn and it wasn't important for them to source elsewhere, okay? If he's not on LinkedIn, I'm not interested. That's what they told me. Otherwise, other companies, uh, what I always recommend is to look for those people where they are. So we're talking about meetups. We're talking about blogs. So many people have their personal blogs. They don't want to be anywhere else and because they have their personal blog. Uh, those people who don't want to be out there on the internet, meaning they are more, they value their privacy more, uh, the minute they have spoken in an event, conference, have done something mentioned somewhere, I can immediately find them. So the question is here is how much time do I spend on the sourcing? Okay, so um, would I... Uh, there's this 2080 law, right? Uh, do I spend 80% of my time searching and only bringing those 20? Or do I spend 20% of my time sourcing and bring those 80%? Yeah, the Pareto. Um, the Pareto, exactly. I remembered it was a P. I don't, didn't want to, uh, <laughs> to say something that wasn't correct. Um, so it really, it also depends on the uh, sourcer itself. Is this a full-time sourcer? Is this a recruiter end-to-end -end who has maybe one hour, or two hours to source? Uh, or is this even an HR recruiter who has no time to source, okay? So, uh, yeah, LinkedIn is great. Uh, I would always start with LinkedIn, but, you know, um, I would always... I would always continue to search to the, for those candidates wherever they are. Uh, and I will also say something else. Those people who think that in LinkedIn Recruiter, the full one, okay, the corp one, uh, will show them everything and everyone, it's not always correct, okay? I mean, they should be able to see it, but sometimes the good results are back in page, I don't know, 15 or 16. So I don't even recommend, even if you have LinkedIn Recruiter Corp, I don't recommend only using that. I recommend also backing it up with a little bit of x-ray and trying at least one or two other tools. Right, so you know you have to focus on where the fish is. You need to understand you know, what is the role, the job that you're trying to fill in and then do some research on it and look at where is the audience that you're looking to recruit. For me, sourcing is research. Exactly. You know, yesterday I was on a webinar and somebody explained that it's a sourcer, a recruiter, and an HR. And I said, no, 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 no. Sourcer is not at the bottom line of the, the, of the chain, of the food chain. Sourcer is just like a recruiter, okay? It's just a researcher, okay? It's not an entry-level ticket to a recruitment world. Absolutely not. And I'm really fighting it as best as I can uh, to really empower sourcers to stop thinking that they're at the bottom of the chain. Okay. First of all, sourcers are extremely smart because they need to be extremely curious and intelligent and to think where else can I look for people and, you know, and, and really uh, do some market research and understand the business of, of the industry. Okay. Um, so I am really trying to fight this right now um, uh, for sources to feel much more empowered, much more empowered and, and do more. Yes. 
Um, I, uh, and also what they don't understand is that they hold the key for the company's branding. Okay. If they're the ones who are, uh, engaging with the potential candidates on the front line, it doesn't matter whether how amazing the company's brand is. If the sorcerer is not doing a good job with the engagement, the brand is, you know, is worth nothing at that point. Okay. So we sourcers and even recruiters, we hold the front line. We hold the brand in our hands, okay? So that, that's why I think it's even so much more uh, important not to have sourcers pushed aside, okay? There's many companies who have, um, I don't know how it works in India, for example, but many companies like have a CV center and the, and the uh, sourcers are like pushed aside. They don't take part in, uh, in uh, company meetings. Uh, and I think that's not okay because real professional sourcers need to be on top of the business. They need to know where the company is going to. They need to know what the roadmap is. They need to know the vision of the, of the CEO because we are the one talking to those potential candidates, okay? And this is when we're doing this manually. I mean, now that it's becoming fully automated, it's going to change the, the balance. You know, when I speak to sourcers, it's not enough for, to wait for the manager to come and offer them to join into the business. They have to ask for it, okay? I have to say, I know not a lot of people are like me, but when I wanted something, I just stepped into the CEO's the office and I said, this is what I need. This is what I want, okay? I understand that some cultures are less, uh, um, I would say, adamant or direct or, uh, but, um, but, but I, I really, and I wrote uh, another post about that. I would really like, employees to uh, understand their power and to get out of their own mind shackles, okay? And to burst free and to ask what it is they want to be happy in their job. And a sourcer is a researcher. And for that, we need good tools. We need time. We need to be on top of things. So yeah, I would really, um, I would really like to see that happen. Yeah, I think the first step is to change the mindset, right? Yep. That's what I'm working on all the time. <laughs> so are there any specific, you know, differentials or peculiarities in the approach to HR in Israel as compared to the rest of the world? No, I don't think so. I think we're lagging behind. Um, very much so. Um, and it's, you know, Israel is a country, is a startup nation. Uh, there's like, I don't know, 6,000 uh, 6, uh, startups here uh, for a small, relatively small country of a few million people. Um, so you would, expect, uh, you would expect them to uh, embrace HR tech so much quicker, but they don't. They don't also, as I told you, not only because of their own fault, uh, because also startups cannot uh, prove uh, ROI, but also... It's a big shock for HRs. HRs did not become HRs for technologies. Let's remember this, okay? They're people's people. They are like the opposite of technology. <laughs> and suddenly they are asked to use technologies. Some of them are not equipped to deal with technologies. Some of them are totally disinterested with, the, with technologies. Some of them are fearful for their, for their future roles if there is technologies. Uh, and some of them are adapting really quickly, okay? But that's like, I would say like the 5%, okay? I'll be really large and, and say 10%, okay? Um, so so the, 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 the real question is today, will they be able to step up and learn about technologies and want to adapt to technologies? I believe some of them will. Some of them will say, hey, this is not for me anymore. Right. Yeah. Or, somebody, or, or somebody will say it for them. Meaning they will have to yeah. 
uh, not stay HRs because they, they won't uh, play along with what's going on? Uh, I think the future of work in terms of recruitment, would, do you think it will really be different now after the pandemic? What, is, what are your insights? What are you reading? Listen, uh, after, after Corona, um, there are going to be, of course, some changes. As I said, remote work is still going to stay and perhaps uh, become more widespread. Um, um, besides, I, I'm not really worried about what's going to happen after the Corona because after a few months, you know, some, uh, you know, companies who wanted to uh, cut their uh, head count will probably do so now because it's a good, a, a good uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunity to do it, uh, sadfully and uh, regretfully. Uh, but I, I don't think, um, I think most recruiters will go back to their work. They may have less work. They may uh, help with HRs. But I think uh, I'm, I'm still a lot more concerned with what's going to happen with recruiters once, uh, with sourcers and recruiters once uh, more technology is adopted. Okay, because one chatbot can do the work of 400, uh, not 400, of, of, of thousands of people. Okay, so call centers, uh, CV centers, all of this, all of those people, I'm concerned about them because we're not going to be needing sourcer, recruiter, and HR. No need. All this technology is going to bring to a situation, probably uh, there's an option for it to become uh, more self-service. Why would a VP R&D uh, need the recruiter if he can, you know, talk to his phone and tell his iPhone, find me a, a Python developer in the radius, uh, five Python developers in the radius of 50 kilometers, who is also a team player, uh, attention to detail or whatever. And the whole system does the whole thing automatically. And he gets like after uh, 24 hours, he gets a list, a short list of, of five potential candidates who rated really well. Why would he need a recruiter at this point? So the answer is that he won't, okay? So somebody is going, so there's not, there's not gonna be a need for a sourcer. I'm saying it, I'm, uh, as a sourcer, sourcing is going to not, uh, I, I already say that manual sourcing is dead, although I still teach Booleans, yeah? But uh, looking uh, you know, down the road, like in five years, uh, five, even maybe a little bit more, um, I'm not sure uh, this is still going to be uh, happening, you know, the manual sourcing. Uh, some of it probably will, but between five to 10 years, um, I don't see uh, three roles in the HR like this. Um, there will be one, probably one person uh, looking at data. We have to remember data. All, this, uh, all these technological uh, advancements are uh, going hand in hand with data. So it's either going to be that person who's going to over, be overlooking, overseeing those technologies, working with the robots, okay, with the chatbots and the robots and whoever, um, and looking at the data and consulting that VPR and D who's been using that uh, system uh, himself, okay. Um, is it the only uh, way to look at it? I'm sure not. I mean, there's probably all kinds of, uh, of predictions on how it's going to be, but, th but that's definitely one of the things that I see going on. So yes, sourcing, recruiting is definitely a role in jeopardy. Now, a lot of people want to say nobody's going to change uh, people. They're not going to take the robots. They're not going to be changed. Uh, a robot will not be taking my job. Um, but I think you read my last post, right? When I said that um, people who are not on top of the exponential growth of technologies are in for, I will say, I will be blunt, in deep shit, okay? <laughs> because if they're not going to be on top of what's going on, they're going to lose their jobs 100%. So my point is always to raise awareness, set some time to learn, 
what's going on with technologies, with AI, nanotechnologies, 3D printing, biotechnologies, and learn how they all come together and, and uh, are bringing this great uh, exponential growth in technologies, which is a menace to a menace uh, to all of us if we won't be on top of what's going on. Absolutely. And thanks for being so honest about it. Because not a lot of people, you know, are <laughs> honest. <laughs> they are just overly optimistic. But that might not be the real case. And yes, you know, uh, of that that's kind of relating coronavirus to technology. That's just, it's amazing. Yeah. I want to tell you that I, I received a really... Um, a really, uh, I would say, different reviews on that post because people who saw that uh, got so scared uh, that, what, how are you equating deaths of corona with death of HR? And I said, that wasn't the point. But this is what they see, locked down, and they couldn't relate to even what I said. This is how fearful people are. The graph, by the way, is not death of corona, it's corona cases, or even. They didn't even go deep into the post to read it, they were so scared. Um, but that's my job to say unpopular things. It's my point of view, of course, but I don't think I'm the only, I, I know for a fact I'm not the only one who thinks this way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot of, lot of sense. It's gonna help a lot of people for sure. And, uh, you know, coming down to my last question, if you have any other important, you know, sound bites or just something that you want to tell our viewers. Um, really important to set time and learn, guys. It's not, it's really, it's not um, something that, uh, how would I say it? It's not, what's the word for it in English? I forget, but it's, it, it needs to be done, okay? It's not something that maybe I'll find time for it, maybe not. Learning now is something that we all have to do. Um, and um, it needs to be, you need to schedule it into your, uh, into your schedule, okay? Into your agenda. One hour a week at the very minimum, listen to webinars, listen to TED Talks. When I wake up in the morning, I hear two TED Talks. One about technology always, and one about whatever, because I believe innovation is at the intersection of multidisciplinary, uh, multi, uh, you know, multi uh, uh, disciplinarianism. I think is the word. I'm sorry. Um, so just don't just learn something that has to do with your work. Try to expand to other industries, other topics, because somehow they always, you know. This is how innovation is done. You, you start with references to other things that you've heard uh, and learned. So learning, just raising awareness, raise your own awareness as to what's going on. It's going to make you such a better recruiter, sourcer and recruiter. Um, you know, even learning about trends, uh, what are employees interested in today? I mean, that will automatically help you engage with them in your email, okay? Um, just, you know, be more on top of everything. Um, yeah, and, and, and I think you'll have, uh, as I said, you'll, you'll become a better source and recruiter, and I think you'll have a better time in your, in your own job. I mean, I, you'll find it so much more interesting. Absolutely. It would be a great time to enhance your skills and get ready for what's coming next. And this is the best time to do it. Yeah. True. Yes. <laughs> well, wonderful. It, it was a pleasure to talk to you, Karen. Thank you I for inviting me again. Thank you. <laughs> great questions. You had great questions. Thank you. Yeah, that's thanks to, to the team. And I really appreciate your time and sharing your views with us. It's been enriching. It's been a learning experience. So thank you so much. Thank you too. Bye. Take care. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye.